Good morning, my name is Helen Kane. Uh, I am the founder and managing director of Pivot MSL and I'd like to talk to you this morning about the role of the MSL in the 21st century life science industry. So huge thanks to Peter Llewellyn for the opportunity to present at this MedCom's networking event in Oxford. What I'd like to share with you in the next 15 to 20 minutes is a little bit about our story, the story of Pivot MSL, and then we're going to come on to talk about who is the MSL, what is it that they do, how do they add value, and finally we're going to think about what might their challenges and needs be in this period of rapid evolution. So Pivot is a specialist consultancy which was born out of a passion for the role of the MSL and the wider medical affairs function. My background is very much rooted within medical affairs, 25 years working within the industry, both across big pharma and the smaller biotech sector. What we do is that we engage within the industry as a trusted and respected partner. As our clients say, you speak our language, you understand what we have to say. And the whole aspect of MSL and medical affair excellence is so huge and varies from company to company. What we do is we work with organisations to define and drive standards of field medical excellence which touches onto the value proposition. We work to build in real capabilities, optimising value and effectiveness. And the most important part about our offering is that we work with individuals throughout their professional development journey. So, who is the MSL? The MSL is an acronym which stands for, as you can see on the slide, Medical Science Liaison. And the reason that we use the term MSL is because it is probably the most widely recognised acronym for this fast growing function within the industry. And the secret is in the name medical individuals working within the medical affairs function who are broadly scientific by background and whose role it is is to act as a point of liaison. So you might be slightly surprised to know that in fact the MSL role has been around for over 50 years. It was first accredited to a company back then by the name of Upjohn and what we knew about the MSL then was, in fact, they were sales representatives. But they were sales representatives with more of a scientific focus. And what separated the MSL then from the MSL today is that their reporting line was into the commercial side of the organisation. So by virtue of the fact that they were both sales and reported into commercial, we can assume that the MSL in 1967 was in fact promotional by nature. And of course, what has happened since 1967 is that regulators and the like have stepped in to ensure this separation, the separation between the development side of the industry and the commercial side of the industry. And this space was filled by the function that we now term medical affairs. And the role of medical affairs is to act as a bridge, as a link, between development and commercial. And in fact, today, medical affairs is recognised as being a critical business partner. So who is the MSL today? And what you see before you is um, a slide which shows the cover of a publication from a meeting in Barcelona in 2017. And the title of the article is the superheroes of pharma, 
are MSLs saving the industry? And today, the MSL is widely recognised as being the external face of medical affairs. The individuals who are engaging with the healthcare community on behalf of the organisation. And they are in fact today selected for their scientific and technical expertise, their communication skills, and really most importantly, their business acumen, their understanding of the purpose of pharma, the understanding about why it is that we do what we do within medical in ultimate support of the patient. In an ideal world, MSLs will be recognised both internally and externally as being different to sales. In other words, that what they do should not be confused with the promotional activities of the commercial organisation, but in fact they are there to act as a link between the organisation and the external healthcare community. So the role of the MSL today is perceived as being critical, valuable, important. And in summary, what we have is we have an individual with deep scientific expertise, with excellent communication skills, great interpersonal skills, who is able to act as a link between the organisation and the physician. So what do they do? What in fact does the MSL do in their day-to-day -day activities? And this is a very simple infographic which really summarises the drug development process and the roles that are able to be active within that process. And you can see that we have on the x-axis here um, a summary of the timeline for um, a drug to come to market, let's call it 15 years. And we can see that the line in green is reflecting that research and development and medical affairs are able to engage with the external community far in advance of the drug being approved. This is absolutely not the case for commercial. We work within a highly regulated environment and it is completely forbidden that commercial would be engaging or that there would be any kind of promotional activity in advance of a drug receiving its marketing authorization or its approval. So this is in fact what we refer to as the drug life cycle and the MSL as a key member of medical affairs is able to legitimately engage in the period before a drug receives its marketing approval. And what this means with respect to internal working is that everything that the MSL and the wider medical affairs function is doing will be aligned to the overarching organisational goals, hence the need to have an element of business acumen. And because of the firewalls that we touched on earlier, it is important that the non-commercial activities are clearly separated from the commercial activities, but at the centre of everything that we do is our patient, who here we see as being represented by the healthcare professional. So what we see here is our perfect world where we have clear separation of activities ultimately in support of organisational goals. So what does that then mean in reality? That then means that the MSL can conduct in a wide, uh, can participate in a wide range of activities which are life cycle relevant. What the MSL might be doing in the period before a drug is launched might be quite different to what happens after a drug receives marketing approval.
And we have here in summary that their activities can be very much around building relationships, building relationships with thought leaders, with external experts within the healthcare community, building relationships that are based on science, building trusted partnerships. MSLs might be involved in the organisation and the running of advisory boards or round table meetings where there is a, the process of scientific exchange is happening and in this instance their role will be very much that of a facilitator. The MSL is legitimately able to engage within the healthcare community around areas of medical education. So they might be involved in a discussion about disease progression, how patients are being treated in the broadest sense of the word, and in that instance, they will have the role of an educator. They are there to disseminate data, to discuss and to share. Equally, they might be involved in data generation, whether that be in terms of company-sponsored clinical trials or working with investigators around investigator-initiated studies. These data are critical in terms of the drug life cycle and the role of the MSL in this instance is that of a collaborator. And finally, MSLs have a critical role to play in terms of patient safety and in this instance they would be a communicator. So how does the MSL add value? And this is one of the biggest questions which causes huge challenges within the industry because what we suggested earlier and what we spoke about is that the expectation is that the role of the MSL and their activities must be completely non-promotional. And by that, what we are saying is that nothing they do can be measured in terms of financial return. So how do you measure the value of a non-promotional function? And what I would suggest is that through their relationship management, that we are building these credible trusted partnerships within the community, within the external community, based on our science and based on our objective balanced approach. Those relationships in the pre-approval period are hugely important for the organisation as it progresses past the drug coming to the commercial marketplace. The second point around scientific exchange is that through scientific engagement, we are able to identify what the views and the opinions are of the external community with respect to the therapeutic area, with respect to drugs, with respect to patient management. And we term this as insights. These insights are hugely important in terms of the organisation making decisions about what it might choose to do next. Education is the process of upskilling. That goes without saying. Data generation, whilst this is more of a long-term endeavour, the generation of ad additional data for the organisation is of critical importance moving forward. And finally, the patient being at the centre of everything that we do, if there are issues with respect to patient safety or risk of any aspect, it is critical that this is acted upon in a timely fashion. So all of these are ways in which we can look at the MSL value. So it sounds like a perfect world, but the reality is that there are a huge number of challenges for the external face of medical in terms of the conduct of their activities. And when we think in particular about the role of the medical science liaison, the expectation is that you will have the right people. The MSL has to be the right individual for the organisation. So what that is saying 
is that they need to have a depth of scientific knowledge, not only around the therapy area, about the drug, about the pipeline, but also about the competition. Not only do they need knowledge, but they need to have the skills to complement the knowledge that they have. They need to have an understanding of the compliance framework within which they operate because they need to be able to engage without put in, putting either themselves or the organisation at risk and they need to be able to work effectively in a matrix environment. You'd be surprised about the number of MSLs that don't actually have clarity about what is the purpose of their role. What is my purpose? So in order for an MSL to deliver with excellence, they need to have clarity of what is the purpose of my role at this time within our organisation. And then we look at alignment. Are my activities aligned to the overall organisational goals? Is what I'm doing relevant? Complex science. We live in a world where science is moving at a huge rate. And if we are to be perceived as being a trusted expert and a partner, it's important that the MSL has the opportunity to upskill, to be abreast of everything that is happening within the therapy area. And on the bottom line, we have five further additional challenges. Access to the physicians. Our physicians are time poor, they're pharma wary. So is it possible to engage with physicians in the way that we would like to? And yes, we work in a, in a very competitive industry. So you can be certain that if Company X has got MSLs operating in their oncology space, companies Y and Z will likewise have MSLs operating in this space. And metrics. How do we measure the value of what they are doing? Do we have metrics in place that allow us to measure the output for MSLs, which then leads on to the value recognition. Are MSLs being recognised for the value that they bring to the physician and to the internal organisation? And last but by no means least, are MSLs being supported to deliver in role in the same way that our sales colleagues historically have always been supported? So in summary, what I would like to suggest is that medical affairs, more so today than ever, is uniquely placed to engage as a partner in ultimate support of the patient. And the MSL, as the external face of medical affairs, has a valuable role to play as a conduit between the physician and the wider organisation. Their activities should be aligned to the organisational goals, but may vary according to the drug life cycle. But we must also be very cognisant that we need to understand what the physician needs and interests are. And finally, in role challenges can be very complex. Organisations wish to attract the very best MSLs and they wish to retain the very best MSLs. So both MSLs and their managers will benefit from specialist support throughout their professional development journey. Thank you.